Hey everybody, Johnny here. In this video, we're gonna take a look at the new mesh topology nodes that have been added in Blender 3.4 beta. We're gonna see how to use these nodes to get results like this, where I've placed a bolt in each face corner of my mesh, and how we can use them to get access to a lot of information that would have been a lot harder to get to before. So let's dive right in. We're gonna start with a simple plane, and we wanna place a point in each corner. There's a couple of ways to do this, but for the sake of checking out the new mesh topology nodes, we're going to do it a certain way. First, we're going to need some points to distribute. So I'll use a point node and join it with my geometry. Now, since we want a point for each corner, we can use the corner count for our number of points. We'll just use an attribute domain size node, plug it into our mesh and use the face corner count. So now you can see here in the spreadsheet, we have four points that we can distribute. So let's get the position of the points that are connected to each corner. One way to do that is by using the vertex of corner node. So under mesh topology, I'll choose vertex of corner. You see that vertex of corner takes a corner index. So we'll add in an input index node and plug it in. Later, we'll add a node that makes sure we're dealing with the corner index here. Now that we have a vertex index, we can use that to pull out information from that given vertex. We're gonna use the field at index node. So if I take a vertex index and plug it in as the index of my field at index node, I can now access information from any of my points using their vertex index. So we see here, since this is a vertex index, we want to be in the point domain because vertices live in the point domain. Now in this case, we just want the position of that vertex. So I'll change this to vector and add an input position node. So now that I'm accessing this position, I'll wanna connect this to my original geometry. The thing we want to do though, is we want to look at each of the corners of this geometry and use those as our indices here. So we'll use a geometry sample index node. This node is one of several that was split apart from the old transfer attribute node. So here, if I take a split off of my original geometry and I put this in face corner mode, I can now look at the indices of my face corners. I'll bring this index over. So now this sample index will look at the four face indices of this plane. And what does it want from them? It wants the position of their vertex. So I'll change this to a vector and plug in my field at index. So let's take a look at what's happening here. We're sampling the face corners using their index and we're getting a value. That value is coming from a field at index that's on the point domain but the index that we're using in the point domain is actually being derived from a corner index, which we get from here. So both this index and this index are on the face corner domain. So this one will go from zero to three, and this one will go from zero to three. Now that we have these, let's use those position to drive our points. Let's add a split down the middle of this face so that we have a different number of vertices than we do face corners. So now we have six vertices, but we have eight face corners. The ones in the middle here are simply overlapping each other. So now that we have the position of the vertex that's associated with each corner, let's get the position of the vertex that's associated with the previous and next corners. If I duplicate these nodes, I can adjust these so that I can get the index of the next corner. Now remember that face corner indices are not necessarily in numeric order. So we can't just add one to the index here and expect it to be the next index in the face. To do that, we need to use another mesh topology node. This one is called offset corner in face. This takes a corner index and outputs a corner index, but then uses an offset to get a subsequent corner or a previous corner. In this case, let's put the offset at one. 
So if in this node, we were getting this point, this node would be getting this point, going from this face corner to this face corner. If we duplicate these again, and we make the offset negative one, we're now going from this as the original corner, and we're going down here to the previous corner. So now, for each corner, we have the positions of the vertex that's associated with that corner, and the positions of the vertices in the next position and the previous position. Let's see what we can do with these now. I'm going to add a mix node. And I'll set it to vector. I'll plug in my original point, and I'll plug in the next point. And I'll use this as my sampled value. Immediately, we see that our points have moved to the average of their original position and their next position. Here I'll split the edge in the middle of this mesh so we can see a little better what's going on. Now if I move this factor, they'll go from one position, the original, to the next position. Or if I use the two other points instead of the original, they could trade those places. For this example, I want to come out a certain length from each vertex in either direction and then take the average of those two points, creating a point out here that has some consistency across my entire mesh. So to accomplish this, I'm going to find this vector and this vector. I'll normalize them, which means they'll both end up with a length of 1. Then I can scale them. So they'll both have some arbitrary length, but they're exactly the same because I scaled them both from a length of one. And then I can use those two positions, take the average, and get my new position for my point. Then, as I change this scale, this point will always be splitting the angle between these two sides. So let's do that with our values. To get the two vectors, I simply need to subtract my original point from my other two points. I'll use a vector math node in both cases and set them both to subtract. I'll take the next point and the previous point and subtract the original point from both. That now gives me the full vector between the original point and the previous and next points. However, these vectors are in terms of the origin, not the original position because I got rid of the original position from both. So I'll have to add that original position back in in a moment. Now that I have these two full vectors, I want to normalize them both so their lengths become one. I'll duplicate my subtract node and set it to normalize mode and do that for both. So now both of these vectors have been shrunk down to a length of one. Or if they were shorter than a length of one, they've been expanded to a length of one. Next, I want to scale them both, so I'll duplicate this normalize node and set it to scale. I'll want this scale to be uniform, so I'll duplicate my group input and plug it in as a new value. So now I can adjust this scale from my input. Now that I have these two scaled vectors, they're still at the origin, so I need to shove them back to the original point. That can easily be done by adding in the original point again. So now these two vectors represent this point and this point. I'll simply use my mix node again, and with a value of 0.5, will get me the average between those points. And I can use my scale now to position these. And of course this doesn't just work for rectangular faces. This will also work if my faces aren't rectangular. Now this doesn't take into consideration if your faces themselves become convex. But for somewhat squarish panels, this is going to work just fine. Of course, now that I have this set up, I can clean this up a little bit. All of these index nodes can be combined. And the same with these position nodes. I'll frame all these nodes and name this point positions. Now that we have these points, we can go ahead and instance something on them. We'll use an instance on points node and a mesh primitive cylinder. We want these to be hex head bolts, so we'll do six sides 
plug them into the instance and shrink them down. While these look pretty decent, our source mesh hasn't gotten very complicated yet. Let's take this side, grab this edge, and raise it up. Now while the positions of our points are still being calculated correctly, the rotation of our bolts is not. And that makes sense because we actually haven't done anything with the rotation of our bolts yet. Let's do that next. We want our bolts to be aligned with the faces that they're connected to. Again, there's a couple of ways we could probably approach getting these the correct rotation. But in order to check out some more mesh topology nodes, we're going to use one of those. In this case, we're going to use the face of corner node. This works in a lot the same way as our vertex of corner node works. We'll need to plug in the index. Now that we have a face index, we'll want a field at index. And our domain is going to be face. So we'll plug our face index into this face index. Now, the value we want here is not a position. Instead, it's the normal of that face. So we'll add an input normal and plug it in here. So now we'll be getting the normal of whatever face index is coming in being translated from a corner index. Now that we have this value, we can simply use another sample index node. We'll set it to vector and we'll set the domain to face corner because we're going to want the face connected to each face corner. We'll plug this in here and we'll connect our index as well. And we'll want to join in our original geometry again. So now we have the normal of each face. We can simply use an align Euler to vector node, change that normal into a rotation that our instance on points node can use. We'll plug the normal into the vector and plug the rotation into the rotation. Our cylinders are aligned on the z-axis, so we want the z-axis of the cylinder to point along the normal. All of the z-rotations of our bolts are exactly the same, so if we were to add some more cuts into this one, we would see that all of these bolts are lined up perfectly, and that kind of repetition is going to be really noticeable. So we do want to add some random z-rotation to these bolts. We can take this rotation and add a little something to it. For that, we'll use a rotate Euler node and plug it in here. We want these rotations to be around each of the instances, not around the entire object. So we'll want to put this in local mode. And here, if we change the Z rotation, we see our bolts spin. So we can simply connect a combine XYZ node and a random value node have our random value go from 0 to tau and plug that into the Z. So now all of our bolts have slightly different rotations, which will add to the overall look. So now I'll combine these and rename this to point rotations. We also want to raise up our bolts so they're not sticking through the surfaces. We can use a transform geometry here and translate this up on the Z. To make this a little more useful, we can simply add another group input. And from here, we can adjust the radius of our bolts and the height of our bolts. And if we use a combine XYZ here, we can plug the depth into the Z. Now, of course, we don't want to raise it up the entire depth. We just want to raise it up halfway. So we'll add a math node and divide by two. So now we have control of these right from the modifier. Now that we have this, let's rename this node to corner bolts. We'll mark it as an asset and remove it. I'm going to add a mesh cube and add a new node tree. I want to take each of the faces and make a smaller face coming out of it, like a panel that's being bolted onto it. I'm going to use a duplicate elements node and set it to faces mode. This will duplicate each of the faces individually one time and put them where the originals were, but none of them will be connected. And I'll join this back with the original geometry. 
Now I'll take those new faces and scale them using a scale elements node. I want to scale the faces and I'll scale them down just a little bit. Next I'll take those faces and extrude them. I'll plug in my scale to my input and my extrusion to the input. Next I want to add my bolts just to the top faces of these extruded panels. So I'll take my mesh and add a delete geometry node. And I'm going to delete the top, but only the faces. So now I have the rims of my extrusions coming out of this node. If I do this again, but delete the sides, you'll see I now have just the tops. From here, I'll add my corner bolts to just the tops. and then I'll rejoin those back with the rims. And from there, I'll use a merge by distance node to recombine the rims with the top faces. I'll duplicate my group input and, and plug in my bolt parameters. And now from here, I can set things up. If I wanted to add some materials, I could do that as well. And so there it is, the original mesh with extruded panels, and then bolts placed on those panels aligned to normals with a nice consistent distance from each corner, splitting the angle of each corner as well. While I know this one got into the weeds a bit, I hope it does shed some light on the new mesh topology nodes and how to use fields and their domains correctly in order to get the most out of them. If you're interested in the source file for this project, it's available via my Patreon. And while I'm mentioning my Patreon, a big shout out to all of my patrons. Thank you for your support. I really appreciate it. You're really helping me to get new content out there. Anyhow, I hope this inspires you to make something awesome. And until next time, I'll catch you later.